If there was one skill that would enhance the quality of your life, it is this. It is verbal fluency. Said the most dangerous person is one who is articulate. The ability to communicate successfully with people <laughs> determines the success of your life. Verbal fluency is defined as the ease of communicating your internal thoughts externally to others. You can increase this by reading books, exercise, practicing speeches. You can also increase this with supplements or nootropics that work on specific neurotransmitter systems like glutamate, dopamine, acetylcholine. Verbal fluency is essentially a proxy for IQ as it's real-time working memory ability. And this has been illustrated by a few studies and I feel like it's the best way to approach it. This is really a topic where there could be hundreds of answers because different things work for different people. The easiest for most people, the 80 20 is with racetams through different metrics or so ranging from the paracetam to the nefiracetam they all have a similar chemical structure and they will exhibit positive effects for memory focus and verbal fluency first nootropic is nefiracetam which surprised me and is criminally underrated i always discounted this because it just didn't seem very interesting to me except one day i was on the dumpster fire that is reddit and i saw this post by this guy that tried a bunch of nootropic spent thousands of dollars and he was ranking them on how much they increased his IQ or what it did for him and he ranked nefiracetam dihexa up there as number one and this kind of surprised me and the way that he described it was that it increased complex working memory and it was kind of subtle but it was significant enough to feel it in the background but it was still working and doing its positive effects and then i researched it a little bit because i was kind of curious and i found that it had quite a few cognitively enhancing mechanisms first off it lengthens the time that calcium channels are open in neurons. It is a positive allosteric modulator of the nicotinic receptors in the hippocampus, which is the memory epicenter of the brain. Those are cholinergic receptors, which are very important for memory, focus, physical movements. And thirdly, it is gaminergic, surprisingly, because most things aren't that are very cognitively enhancing, except this is where I believe it's a GABA A agonist. It's a little bit atypical. Like you don't feel like you're on something per se, but you feel like you're just based cognitively faculties are enhanced subtly it's kind of hard to describe except it just subtly works in the background and you notice that you think a bit more divergently you have a bit better memory recall your working memory is a bit better you can process things a bit quicker and you're in a little bit better of a mood things are a little bit more sticky and it gives you a calm focus it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea because some people want things that are a bit more in their face which is fair all of the studies showing the toxic effects of it in dogs were that in dogs where dogs metabolize drugs and compounds differently to us Hence why chocolate is poisonous to them, except enjoyable for us. And even evidence to that point is that it passed phase two clinical trials in the US where it has to have a fairly high safety profile to do so. And it's currently used in Japan for treating Alzheimer's as you're watching this video right now. Next is oxyracetam. And you know, growing up, I always had a speech impediment. You probably can tell because there's some words I just can't pronounce for the life of me for whatever reason. And so there's some ways that I could reduce it where if I cut out gluten, I fasted, I did exercise, I practiced. I was a bit better, but it was always kind of there. And it's kind of evidence to the point. I'm like dyslexic without being dyslexic. I, I don't know, it's hard to describe. Except the day that I discovered this compound, my life changed because all my ahs, oohs, and ands were changed because I could speak competently, coherently, and concisely just immediately within like a couple of minutes of ingesting oxyracetam. And I was like, wow. This is a miracle because communicating is such a vital thing. I use it every time before I record these videos, go on podcasts, go on dates, anything like that as I just speak a little bit more elegantly and it's a little bit more fun for me to communicate with others. It increases cerebral blood flow. It is an ampapam. It increases chat as well as the M1 muscarinic receptors. Probably the best RAS time for studying, in my opinion, as it's an ampokin, which essentially means it's an atypical glutaminergic stimulant that is devoid of the typical stimulant side effects of increased heart rate, blood pressure, anxiety. And it's great, you know, for mental processes, you usually want mental energy and mental clarity where a lot of racetams like Prastam are good for the mental clarity aspect, but they kind of lower the mental energy. 
And so this increases that and the mental clarity. So it's a good thing to have for studying because it can help energize your studying sessions. We're also helping you to memorize more and increasing your short-term memory. This is the original smart drug that started it all. The original Rastam, which is Paracetam, which is the most studied of that drug family. It has a wealth of evidence being prescribed and used um, for over 50 years. Some of Parastam's mechanisms are increasing cerebral blood flow, being an AMPA PAM, increasing NGF, nerve growth factor, increasing acetylcholine usage, and modulates the NMDA receptors. Parastam is great for speech, it's great for fluency. It's not the best for sociability, in my opinion, in that it would give you the ability to give a concrete, concise sermon to an audience and deliver it gracefully and fantastically, except you wouldn't want to stick around afterwards to, you know, meet and greet, kiss the babies, all of that, because it kind of puts you more in a solitude mindset. For me, it kind of just gives me instant autism where I'm just kind of socially aloof. And even so, it kind of nullifies anxiety to me. I think this is because of the cerebral blood flow effect, where if you increase that to a certain point, it results in some anxiolytic properties. It's too reinforcing, where that's the dangerous thing about taking compounds that can be very powerful for memory encoding in that you open Pandora's box and you can encode the good and the bad. And that's what they see in studies where 7,8-DHF, which is essentially a BDNF mimetic, it binds to the same receptor and kind of mimics its effects in the body. That has been shown to be beneficial for fear extinction and fear acquisition as it just puts the brain in a more neuroplastic state so you can reinforce both sides of that coin. Parastam is no different, so definitely take it with caution if you are sensitive to it, or you don't wanna reinforce something bad like eating junk food or watching movies or anything. Stronger effects, taking it sublingually. Usually most people dose between 800 milligrams to four grams. Most people notice that it takes time for the effects to build and you kind of see the results over a span of a couple weeks. Some people like myself notice acute effects. Another compound that always stuck out to me, like a diamond in the rough, is aniracetam, where usually you can take compounds that will increase your social ability, will make it more fun to be around people, increase your ability to talk or your mood, but usually they decrease cognition because they're usually GABAnergic, and GABA is kind of antagonistic to glutamate and to a lot of other excitatory functions. Usually you get one without the other. Where aniracetam is different than that, where it increases social ability as well as it increases mental articulation, as well as it increases memory reinforcement. So it's just very good. It's kind of like the panacea for social situations. It's changed my life in so many ways since I discovered it around four, four and a half years ago. It functions as an apapam potentiates acetylcholine release, increases cerebral blood flow to areas of the brain responsible for more holistic thinking. So you just think more optimistically naturally, which is good. And that's why it's such a revered antidepressant. I always get good articulation effects from anorastam where it just helps me think clearer and think more creatively, where you focus more on the divergent thinking and you can kind of think outside of the box, which is useful to have. It gives me a similar effect to oxyrastam where I can use words that I don't usually use that I would never think of to use in that situation off anorastam. On anorastam in that situation, it just comes naturally and, effort and effortlessly. That being said, I do find it very reinforcing where it can definitely reinforce the bad again. Um, so definitely good to use it with some intention. I usually take a low dose to hang out with friends, record these videos, go on dates, <laughs> script these videos. So anything kind of involving some communication aspect, I always take anorastam because it is so good, fairly cheap, take it sublingually for stronger effects. Nicotine, what if I told you nicotine was a cognitive health compound? It's not the end all be all that's gonna increase your rate of every single chronic disease out there. It is actually a neuroprotective agent. Well, nicotine is, it is an alpha-7 nicotinic receptor that ends up upregulating those cholinergic receptors over time, as well as it activates a lot of distinct anti-inflammatory pathways, which enhances its effects for its neuroprotective abilities. A lot of people swear by it where smokers are significantly less likely to get Parkinson's or dementia because of this mechanism. And it's a very good thing to take in my opinion. If you look at long COVID where there's all that cognitive malaise after 
getting exposed to the virus. Nicotine can be a very good thing to take that's over the counter, very easy to use. Tolerance does build, smoking is bad. Best to use low doses intermediately. Dose dependent results, as it depends on the person, how sensitive you are to nicotine, there is definitely a dose that results in diminishing returns. Um, so you definitely wanna see where you are, what your set point is. Most people will do good with around two milligrams to four milligrams of nicotine daily in the form of a lozenge or gum or so. That's probably the best way to ingest it. Vaping, smoking, <laughs> cigarettes or cigars are bad as there's a lot of harmful additives and chemicals added to those to make them more addictive. Nicotine by itself, pure nicotine, it's not that bad to be honest. And this isn't an opinion that's unique to me. This is fairly popular within the biohacking community or so. If you've ever seen some of your favorite health influencers with a blue tongue, this is why. It's because they take methylene blue, which is one of the oldest medications in existence. They say mitochondria dysfunction is the root of all disease and mitochondria function is very important for cognition, for memory, for mental energy, focus, mood, a lot of different things. And this is an easy, breezy way to enhance its function for most people where you can pay $20, get it from the store, and it can give you consistent effects. It's also a monoamine oxidized A inhibitor. It's a fairly strong antioxidant. It is strong antiviral abilities. It's actually the parent drug to hydroxychloroquine, where if you've been alive in the past few years, you know there's been a very revered drug for a certain virus. It also, inhibits acetylcholinesterase, so it has a lot of different mechanisms for increasing verbal fluency, verbal articulation, and a lot of people swear by it. It's also great for dealing with general fatigue. For me, it gives me a distinct sense of mental clarity, and I even recorded these videos on methylene blue, and I don't know if you can tell by how I speak, but I think I sound at least a little bit more articulate than usual. If you want a simple articulation stack, you could take oxyracetam, methylene blue and nicotine. You could swap out the oxyracetam for paracetam if you wanna veer more on the more studied side, except that's a fairly strong, safe, effective, repeatable, efficacious stack that you can use in a bunch of situations. Phenobut, I avoided this compound for years because I thought I have an addictive personality, this is an addictive substance, this is stupid, let me not try this. And then eventually I decided to try it just because why not? And I was pleasantly surprised. I think with a lot of these addictive compounds, you got to be at least like somewhat smart and you got to respect the compound and it will respect you. It's like you see a bear in the wild, you respect that bear. You don't go up and take selfies with it. You respect it, you keep your distance. You realize it is something that can harm you. Phenibit is the same way where it can. Does it mean it will? Does it mean it should? Except it can, it has that ability. If you abuse it, it's gonna abuse you. And so a way to work around that is by not abusing it you'll be fine. If you think about it, Phenibit is a prescribed medication that's been prescribed in Russia for the last few decades at small doses around 250 milligrams to 750 milligrams and it's been shown safe at those doses. Problems arise where people go into the grams dosages not the milligrams and that is the issue in my opinion. So if you stay within the milligrams you will be fine, you'll be happy and you'll be social as there is so much benefit to GABA B receptor agonism which is what Phenibit does for sociability as it's very much the charisma receptor and it's just easier to talk. You're in a better social mood, you're more funny, you can tell stories better, you can vibe, communicate, jibe, all of that good stuff better. It also increases dopamine release. Phenibit's kind of weird where at low doses it's a stimulant, at high doses it's a sedative. I use it when there's anything that I need to socially perform at, <laughs> like if I need to go to a party or meet some new people or anything like that, as I find it's just great for that sociability, that natural vibe, that easy ability to talk to people, connect. You might have seen some common trends in this video like positively affecting glutamate receptors, increasing mitochondria function, increasing cerebral blood flow, increasing dopamine release affecting acetylcholinergic transmission, um, as those are very good targets to aim for. And if you wanna get smarter, quicker, without doing all this miscellaneous, unuseful stuff, check out this video where I talk about the best compounds, nootropics to enhance cognition based on evidence and based on community consensus. So check out that video on screen.